Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. You know, the real start of the crusade against crypto uh, came when the SEC attacked Ripple and XRP holders. And yes, of course, there were other tax attacks on, on crypto before that, but, you know, it, in my estimation, that was the point where things escalated substantially and it became crystal clear that there weren't just these one-off instances where there are some bad actors in the crypto space that were getting attacked. Uh, by the administration and various government agencies. Not, that, that wasn't the case. It was very clear that there was a mission in place, even several years ago, to take out the entire crypto asset class. Some politicians wanted that, and some bureaucrats wanted that. But I, I will tell you this. We've been through the worst of the SEC attack, uh, you know, as, as well as the attack on crypto you know, from the, from the current administration. And, and for the first time, honestly, and you'll see why I'm saying this, you're going to love this video if you're pro-crypto. Uh, for the first time, it looks like an ending is in sight, even if that ending is, you know, pretty much at the horizon. You know, even if it takes years to get there, but it's visible. The path is there. Things have changed so quickly, and it's for glaringly obvious reasons, which I've been saying for the longest damn time, literally for years on end. It's just it's coming uh, to fruition now. It is indeed the case that there is no voter block that is anti-crypto. Yes, there are people who are anti-crypto because they're idiots and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, th they exist, but is crypto an actual voting issue? Is that something that's going to drive them to uh, to to the uh, to the to the poll to the uh, election booth, a uh, voting booth? No, obviously not. But is there a is there a voter block of pro-crypto people out there? Yes. Oh, yes. I consider myself part of that. I'm willing to bet that the vast majority of you do as well. Things are changing. And I have to tell you, um, <laughs> like, it got to talk about a few things political, but only insofar as it pertains to crypto and finance, because this is not outside of that, a political YouTube channel. It never will be. I don't care if you're on the left or the right. I don't care. We can all be friends here. I'm not going to be preaching my personal political beliefs to you other than, uh, it, you know, it, it, however it would pertain specifically to crypto and finance, because that's my realm. So if the politicians want to jump into my realm, yeah, I'm going to talk about it, but that's as far as I go. But wait till you see what, uh, what, what Donald Trump has been saying, because my God, it, the degree to which he has, has flipped pro crypto is astonishing. He has recognized this gigantic voter block, which I've been talking about for the longest damn time. And so just as a quick reminder here, just a little table setting in case you missed it. Uh, here's a headline from Blockworks from May 16th. Senate passes resolution to overturn SAB 121. And so SAB 121 was the what uh, the, the SEC implemented, which basically made it impossible financial for financial institutions to custody crypto. It is an attack on crypto. And uh, normally you don't go through that particular type of process, putting out an accounting bulletin, which is what this is, to get something like this through because it's too big of a deal. And that's why uh, it was, you know, many in, in, uh, politicians in Congress said, this is actually illegal. For something of this magnitude, you need to go down the proper uh, path, which they didn't do. Uh, and so the House uh, first voted to overturn SAB 121, which is Ginsler's anti-crypto uh, setup. And then the, uh, then the Senate also voted, uh, amazingly, to, uh, to, to tear the damn thing down as well. Now, on May 8th, before this, this, this we saw the result of the votes. On May 8th, President Biden said, uh, if this gets to my desk, I'm going to veto it. But since then, uh, there's been clear panic in the administration. I think it's very obvious they're starting to, even they are starting to soften a bit on crypto. Um, <laughs> and uh, so it'll be, he may still veto it, but, uh, and he said he would. But I think that they're recognizing this is actually harming them in the polls. And the polls currently, mind you, this is an election year in the United States, polls not looking so hot for the current administration. We also have this. House passes crypto regulation bill, eyes Senate approval. So this is from May 23rd, and I covered this at the time. So pass the House, we'll see what happens moving forward. And then there's the question of, you know, is this something that would also get vetoed? Well, in this case, amazingly, and this is why I said one of the reasons, I said uh, Biden was softening on, on his anti-crypto stances because he said that, uh, I shared it at the time, I'll, just, I'll paraphrase here, but he said he'd work to get some sort of, you know, uh, crypto legislation through and that he indicated that he would not veto this one. He'd veto the other one, but not this one because whatever. It's because he flip-flopped. He did like a 180 in zero seconds flat once the administration realized, oh man, we're in trouble. That's all it is. Wh whichever way the political winds are blowing, whatever's going to be great uh, for him in terms of getting reelected. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. 
And then you have this headline from the Daily Hoddle, Elizabeth Warren and anti-crypto movement losing their battle, according to former CFTC chairman. And so check this out. I just want to share with you a quote. I want to read the whole article. <clears throat> um, so they're talking about uh, Giancarlo. Um, yeah, Christopher Giancarlo, former CFTC chairman. And, uh, and so he noted that uh, the White House may veto th- that bill, which it's the FIT21 bill. That's the one that I just referenced. Said uh, a move traditional banks l- would likely back. And so he said, quote, I think the passage of SAB 121 reversal says that the Elizabeth Warren wing is a shrinking iceberg, notwithstanding some parts of the banking system that may be resistant to digital asset innovation, forcing them to reserve a hundred percent against their holdings effectively means banks can't be a player in this innovation. I think the rejection of this is there. So the White House may veto this, but I think it puts them in an increasingly untenable position against the tide of history, against the tide of innovation, end quote. That's, folks, that is exactly in line with what I've been saying. It's, it's been the, the, the most obvious ultimate result for years and years and years and years. It's been glaringly obvious. Just, it's, I've always just thought it's just a matter of how long until we get there, and you can see, you can see it. The tides, they have a changed, my friends. And take a look at this. Now, um, I have complained about the previous administration's approach towards crypto under Donald Trump. Uh, he's anti-crypto, obviously. Uh, not, obviously not nearly to the degree that Biden is. Like, Biden was like, hold my beer, you know? <laughs> he's like, let's just take a hammer to the entire day. Way, way, way worse. Well, Donald Trump, whether he genuinely uh, feels differently about crypto or doesn't, you guys can debate that in the comment section. What I'm telling you is he's identified a, a voter block. And I personally do believe that he's, in a general sense, going to follow through with the pro-crypto things that he's stating. And maybe he really did learn to some degree, okay, well, we can, you know, it's, it's, maybe it's not going to risk the United States dollar that much, or who knows what he thinks. But the, the point is, the stuff that he's saying here, I, I, <laughs> it's so on the nose here, I, the hell that he will go through if he doesn't follow through with a lot of this stuff. I mean, it would, it would be substantial. Uh, so check out what he's been saying here, because... Again, you know, I don't like talking about politics a whole lot on this channel, but again, as it pertains to crypto here, you probably care about this, don't don't you? You know, even if you're outside of the United States, what happens in the United States, the world's largest capital market, that impacts all of the rest of you outside of our country. So you you sh- sadly, I hate to say, like you should care, unfortunately, at least if you're in crypto, at least, right? And so here's here's the headline from Coin Telegraph. Donald Trump declares U.S. must not settle for second place in crypto industry. And um, I'm not going to read much of the article here, but here's what they were referencing. There was this post from his social media platform, Truth, uh, which reads as, as follows. And he just posted this the other day, and this is what everybody's been talking about on social media as a result. Uh, here it is from, from Donald Trump. I am very positive and open-minded to cryptocurrency companies and all things related to this new and burgeoning industry. Our country must be the leader in the field. There is no second place. Crooked Joe Biden, on the other hand, the worst president in the history of our country, wants it to die a slow and painful death that will never happen with me. Golf clap for supporting crypto. Absolutely. (laughs) And check this out. Uh, This might be part of the reason they're like, yeah, we do want them crypto voters. (laughs) Take a look at this. Uh, According to Polymarket, a New York-based crypto prediction platform, Trump has a 56% chance of winning the election, while current President Joe Biden holds a 38% chance. So like I said, can't really afford to be giving up voters at this particular juncture in time. This is the election. However it lands, it's probably going to be very close. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and November. So who knows? This could shift. Uh, but I, I don't want anyone uh, to have any power uh, you know, from a voting perspective if they're anti-crypto. I am against anyone that's anti-crypto. Now, that doesn't mean I'm a one-issue voter, but I don't want that. So you can guess which way I'm going here. I know what, I know, I know what outcome of this election is in my personal best interest from a financial perspective, especially as it pertains to crypto. Do, do you have that figured out? Because look, I don't, even if you prefer um, any you know, politics of the left, that's fine. I'm not here to talk about the other crap. Just believe whatever, you, that's fine. But at least be intellectually honest enough to admit to yourself that it's in your best interest if there's a change in administration. You, you have to be intellectually honest enough to, to, to acknowledge that if you're in crypto, right? 
Uh, here's a post from Bank XRP. He shared this video clip of Trump talking and giving all the, the crypto stuff, and he had a couple quotes here. Uh, Trump said, quote, I will ensure that the future of crypto and Bitcoin will be made in the USA, end quote. And here's another one. Quote, I will support the right to self-custody to the nation's 50 million crypto holders, end quote. You gotta love that. Uh, here's another one. This was shared by Mario Nafal. Uh, he said, quote, and I love this as well, because obviously John Deaton is trying to take Senator Elizabeth Warren's job right now. Uh, he can. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I have all the confidence that he actually can pull that off. Check out this quote, though. It's just like, Trump, like basically every every um, crypto issue from a political perspective that we broadly have, because there's not much disagreement on a lot of stuff. All these big things that we keep talking with just in a, a broad crypto community. Trump has taken on all of those positions. That is what he has done. He wants these voters. So he said, quote, I will keep Elizabeth Warren and her goons away from your Bitcoin. I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency, end quote. <laughs> How about that? Uh, then there was this post from attorney James Murphy in the world of crypto, uh, known as Meta Lawman. And he said, it's hard to believe how suddenly crypto has come to the fore. I was half expecting Trump to say, and I'll terminate Operation Choke Point 2.0 and make sure Caitlin Long's Custodia Bank gets a Fed Master account, end quote. Yeah, exactly. That's about how close he's getting here, right? And then he said, I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't settle any crypto case with the current SEC before seeing how the election turns out. Given what Trump and Kennedy are saying, I would expect a very different SEC under open-minded leadership like Hester Peirce or similar. For starters, I could imagine voluntary dismissals of crypto cases the Gary Gensler regime has initiated where there was no fraud and no victims. I would expect a return to the core mission of protecting investors rather than trying to achieve political objectives through enforcement. Uh, yeah, that, that's going to change. I, I would not be surprised if that ends up coming to pass. I mean, under different leadership, if it goes the way that we think and hope it will, broadly speaking... There's an actual chance of that. Now, of course, we as XRP holders had to go through all this crap all these years and basically missed an, missed an entire bull cycle, but we can't control that. Life's still good. The financial opportunity is still here. It's all going to be okay. And take a look at this one. This is the degree to which he's going all on crypto. For a headline from Coindesk, Trump pledges to free Silk Road creator Ross Albrecht if re-elected. Donald J. Trump has pledged to commute Silk Road founder Ross Elbrick's life sentence to time served if he's re-elected president. And he said, quote, if you vote me, vote for me on day one, I will commute the sentence of Ross Albrecht to a sentence of time served. He's already served 11 years. We're going to get him home, end quote. Now, that's a very popular position uh, for people in the world of crypto. And certainly on the surface, it sounds like an outrageously harsh sentence. And maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I actually, I'll just mention this briefly. Um, I looked into this fairly in depth, the, this whole this whole court case, um, shortly after I jumped into crypto. So it may have been 2018. It's, it's been a long time. Um, I will say, though, when I looked into it, after learning some of the specifics and, and, and looking at a lot of the evidence, I understood why he had the harsh sentence that he did. I mean, it was stuff, and I'm pulling from memory from like over half a decade ago, so I admit I could be a little wrong, and if and perhaps there's even you know information that could persuade me. So I'm not saying I'm 100% cemented in my position, but it seems like he did disgusting, terrible things that could have or did risk the lives of many people and may have actually resulted in real death. So... You know, on the surface, like, oh, he ran an internet website. Well, have you listened? So everybody out there seems to have an opinion on this. Be, be honest, though. Have you, if you have a firm opinion, do you deserve to have a firm opinion or a loose opinion? Have you spent the time to look into this to any degree more than just surface level stuff? Because I've read into some serious stuff. Now, again, it's been a long time. I'm willing to be persuaded. But I, I'm just saying, after going through it, I was like, God, maybe he really does deserve to be in jail. And so then for all these years since, I see people saying he should get out. It's too harsh. And I'm just like, well, maybe you're right. But I don't think you did any research into this. I think you just feel a certain way because it's easy to feel that way on a surface level, especially if you're pro-crypto. Um, but, but either way, this is setting that aside. This is a very popular perspective in crypto. It's hard to find people that disagree with that. And I acknowledge that almost everyone thinks that he should uh, be let free. And um, that, that might happen. There's a real chance. 
And so, because otherwise, he's, he was never going to get free. There's no, not a chance. Unless he gets a presidential pardon, he's stuck forever in prison. That's that. Um, and so he got news of this, and he shared this post on sh- social media platform X. Now, of course, um, he he isn't typing this himself. <laughs> he's, he's sharing messages, and then he has somebody run his account for him. But this is the real Ross Albrecht account. Uh, 180,000 followers on X. And here's what Ross said, and understandably, uh, he's ecstatic. He wrote the following. Last night, Donald Trump pledged to commute my sentence on day one if reelected. Thank you, thank you, thank you. After 11 years in prison, it is hard to express how I feel at this moment. It is thanks to your under un, undying support that I may I may get a second chance. So, I I can understand the the excitement from his perspective, and there's a reasonable. In fact, if you look at the odds today. It looks like Biden is in trouble. Now, that can change, and I still think it's going to be closer than a lot of people are expecting um, the, the actual election. But, um, you know, if I'm Ross, I'm thinking a better than 50% shot based on the landscape today that that's going to happen, in which case I, I bet Trump would follow through with this. I'd be willing to bet here. And so that's why I said, like, clearly the tides have turned. We've gone through hell and back as an XRP community, but uh, the end's in sight. I mean, these are the most obvious uh, crypto stances to have if you're in the world of crypto. Like, these are the stances that, you, like, the typical crypto bro has. And Trump's like, yeah, I believe with all, all that, all that, even Ross, let's get Ross out of there. <laughs> My God. That's a total flip from what uh, Trump was saying when when, uh, when his administration was in charge. But, uh, hey, he recognized an opportunity when it comes to this crypto voter block. Uh, he may have genuinely changed his perspective. Uh, I can't read his heart and mind, but I, I have a feeling he's actually going to follow through with a lot of this stuff here. So, if, you know, if, if given the chance here. So we'll see what happens. But it, isn't it fascinating how things have changed into this degree? I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.